Bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. So happy to be back yet again. Listen, I had to make somewhat of a part two to the previous message that I made because I will be remiss if I don't include because it's correlated to murder, believe it or not. And any time when you go to the military, you are basically signing up to kill someone if need be. Okay, if need be. So anytime you're dealing with murder or an accessory to murder, you will, in fact, reap the harvest thereof. So today I want to talk about my personal experience with dealing with that. And you say, Samantha, what are you talking about? You were in the military. Well, I did have an abortion years ago. And no one told me the spiritual ramifications behind abortion. No one told me that for upwards of 10 years plus that I would not only have demonic spirits attached to me, but that I would also have, okay, a hatred for my own self to the point where it actually made me want to kill myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you this because I know what I'm talking about. And I'm also telling you this because there's a lot of spiritual things that I've learned along the way. And one of the major things, one of the major key things that they don't want to teach you in church is that after you shed innocent blood or if you are an accessory to shedding innocent blood, there is a price in your life that you have to pay. When I committed murder, in a sense, when I got my abortion, unfortunately years ago, right? No one told me that, Samanda, you will reap the harvest thereof. See, God's word is clear. God hates, okay? When God hates something, you need to literally realize the seriousness of what God is talking about in that particular subject. Okay? Just like when God says he finds things abominable. When God finds things an abomination, that means it's sin on steroids. That God downright detests that very thing. So, you know, I don't want to be long on this message. I just want to let you guys know that no one told me after the abortion that I have that I will be suffering in a lot of ways in my life that I was not prepared for. Let me give you a prime example. Anytime you shed innocent blood and don't think nothing of it, <laughs> you are kidding yourself. So if you're out there, you just got saved, you're not, you know, that seasoned in the word of God, or you just, you know, started out in church or whatever the case is, nine times out of 10, they're not going to teach you a lot of the spiritual things that you're learning, whether it be on my channel or a lot of other people's channel. You're not going to get the behind the scenes information because a lot of the stuff, listen, the lot of the stuff that you're learning they don't want to talk about. It's kind of like taboo with them. The stuff that they need to be talking about, which is primarily things dealing in the spiritual realm and warfare. Listen, when Jesus came on the scene, physically walking on earth, healed the sick, cast out demons, um, raised the dead. Listen, stuff like that. God gives us a mandate to do the same. We are commissioned to do the same. So you need to realize that spiritually there is a side of your relationship with God and your walk with God that is the unseen world. And the unseen world, okay, is more real than this thing that we call reality right now. Let me get back on track in terms of reaping and sowing and things of that nature in terms of shedding innocent blood. When you shed innocent blood by way of abortion, you are setting yourself up for future miscarriages. And I've had quite a few. And I tell you what, one miscarriage can turn your life upside down. 
And when you have more than one, you literally have to look at life and things in a spiritual perspective. Okay? Oh, yeah. You have to rewind the tape in your life in terms of the innocent blood you may have shed. Samanda, what are you talking about? I never, ever, ever had an abortion. Got you there. But I still had a miscarriage. What can you say with that? Well, I tell you what. If you have generational curses in your life that you have not yet rectified, dealt with, cast out, have forgiven your ancestors or forefathers for, it can have an effect on your life, brothers and sisters. I mean, you have to be real and honest about who, what, when, why, and how. Things are not just happenstance, okay? Every time, it's not all, It's not always age, brothers and sisters. It's not always you're overweight. It's not always you have a chemical imbalance. Sometimes there's spiritual ramifications behind this. And for me, personally speaking, I know, I don't believe, I know that that abortion that I had and shedding innocent blood, okay? And like I said, listen, when when I was in a relationship with that guy for two years, okay, I thought I was going to get married. I thought that having his baby, he would be excited about it. And, and unfortunately, he wanted me to abort the baby. I didn't want to. A, a lot of me didn't want to, okay? But I was, um, I was mentally and emotionally, uh, in so many ways, coerced to do that thing. Uh, and that thing, uh, that abortion, and that abortion... And like I said, just like with the military, shed innocent blood. Because a lot of people in the military, they shed innocent blood. What are you talking about? Okay. Say that they go to a different country, right? And they are given orders to kill not only a man, but kill his wife and his children. Innocent blood. You don't think that that, that, that you think that's, that's nothing? You think that that man doesn't have to pay, whether it be him tormented uh, <laughs> in his dreams or whether it be tormented uh, in his marriage or tormented financially or wh whatever the case is, huh? He could be, you know, given cancer. I mean, I don't know. All I'm saying is there is a spiritual reaping and a sowing of what we do in life. And we need deliverance and we need to ask for forgiveness and we need to forgive. Nobody thinks about this. We need to forgive all parties involved. What are you talking about, Samanda? I needed to forgive the person that I was with. Oh, yeah who paid $65 that day like it was shut up money, hush hush money because I took off work that day and he took me to get the abortion. He thought that that was justifiable. Oh yeah. Yeah, we have to forgive. Brothers and sisters, one of the hardest thing you could ever do is forgive someone who is a culprit in making your life a living hell. In a lot of ways. So what am I saying? I'm saying that when you deal with the spirit, particularly with murder, you are setting yourself up with different spirits. And in order to get your life free, you have to get delivered. Ha you have to have healing. And you have to, you know, uh, come to the conclusions that there may be and that they will be. Spiritual and natural ramifications behind the act that you've committed. God hates the shed of innocent blood. So if you had an abortion, if you had two, three, whatever the case is, you will reap what you sow accordingly. If you're in the military and you've killed a couple of people, okay, you will reap what you sow. And those spirits... If they're not cast out of you, okay, 
if they're not cast out of you, you will have those attachments accordingly. That's why it's very important to pay attention to the decisions you make and you have to make sure that each and every decision you make is of God. It may not be a godly decision. To your eyes, it may be a good decision, huh? but it may not be a God decision. You may think that going to the military is the right thing to do. You may think that having that abortion is the right thing to do, but is it a God decision? See, we want to walk in the will of God. We want to always walk in God's will because as long as we walk in God's will, we are then positioning ourselves in a a humbling position. I want to follow the leader. I want to submit to God's will and not my own. And then that's how you become successful. That's how you are blessed. There's a lot of people out there that are literally literally living for the devil, partaking in the devil's festivities, wearing the devil's items of artifacts, clothing, whatever the case is, just all around secular and worldly. And wonder why they're sowing and reaping a certain thing. And wonder why they're reaping a certain thing in their lives. Oh yeah, we have to be clear That God wants to be involved in your decision making. 